Good evening, uh, everybody, and welcome to the Planning Committee on Tuesday, 25th of April, 2023. Uh, we'll get straight into the agenda then. Apologies for absence. I've had apologies for uh, Councillor Jones, Councillor Maycock and Councillor Price. Um, if we move on to the next line item of the agenda, it's the appointment of Vice Chair for this committee for this last meeting of the municipal year. So governance is governance. Uh, do I have any... But Councillor Summers. Can I nominate Councillor Simon Goodall, please? Thank you, Councillor Summers. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Thompson. So, uh, do, do we have to go for a vote, don't we? Uh, can we uh, have, have a show of hands and a vote, please? Thank you very much. Congratulations, Councillor Goodall. Thank you, Chair. Um, okay, so uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, do I have a, 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 they all read and understood, do I have a Councillor Goodall, Councillor Harper, proposer and seconder. Uh, any declarations of interest? None, fantastic. Okay, so if we uh, move on to the uh, one application for consideration tonight, and that is, uh, 0072 2023-7E Claymore Tamworth and I'll hand over to the uh, officers to present. Thank you. Thank you Chair. Um, I'm just going to, uh, we haven't got we haven't got many slides to go with this, just um, the layout plan and the elevation so I'll just I'll just show you those quickly. So this is uh, the location plan or um, the site plan um, and it's uh, 7E Claymore on Tame Valley Industrial Estate. And this you can see outlined in blue is the, uh, it's a proposed extension to the, to the industrial unit at 7E uh, Claymore. And this is the elevations, and the uh, the grey bit is is the extension. Up, oh, and that's it. <laughs> so I'll just go. How do I go back? Just zoom out with the arrows at the bottom. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I'll just leave it on that slide um, for you to look at. Um, so this is an extension to a unit um, uh, on Claymore um, that's been used for the storage and distribution of uh, gates by a company called Readymade Gates Limited. Um, they solely sell and distribute via the internet. There isn't a showroom or anything uh, on the site or elsewhere. Um, <clears throat> this has come to committee because it's uh, a major application it, they want to add an additional 1,078 square metres of floor space. Um, they currently employ about, well, sorry, not about, they currently employ six members of staff and they anticipate employing 12 following, um, should, should, should they get approval and, and construct the extension. The site is... Um, a strategic, well, Tame Valley Industrial Estate is a strategic employment area um, and, and we have a policy that states that we will support B8 storage and distribution development in, in Tame Valley Industrial Estate. Um, a number of, uh, there's been a number of consultees, the key ones being environmental protection, um, the development plans team, uh, highways and the coal authority. But all consultees were, were either happy or happy subject to um, uh, the application of, of, of conditions. Um, just to say briefly, the development plans team um, referenced EC7, which is the policy that contains details about the strategic employment areas, um, which, as I say, includes Tame Valley Industrial Estate. 
Um, and that policy says that the planning permission should be granted for B8 uses on the network of strategic employment areas and the expansion of any existing businesses within these sites, within these use classes will be supported. Um, Highway's comments were that there were two access points which are going to be retained uh, as is. Um, they submitted tracking details um, that Highway's were quite happy with. Um, and they considered the parking to be adequate and to comply with uh, Appendix C in our, of our local plan. Um, so they support the application subject to um, a condition um, relating, obviously, to, to complying with the plans as far as access is concerned and the parking. Um, the Coal Authority, <coughs> the site falls within the development high-risk area, as do a lot of developments in, in Tamworth and therefore investigative work is required by condition. Um, so they also were, were happy subject to that condition being applied. Um, similarly, environmental protection records this site as being possibly contaminated and have also asked for a condition to investigate any potential contamination and obviously for that to be dealt with appropriately um, and mitigation measures to be used if necessary. Um, uh, so we had no comments from neighbours and in this case obviously the neighbours aren't residential neighbours, their neighbours are all, all commercial. Um, so my report, uh, in my report I've uh, addressed a number of issues, um, the first section being about the principal obviously it's it's within a within the urban area of Tamworth and complies with the most relevant strategic policy, which is EC7. Um, so we, we, we take the view that it's, it's acceptable in principle. As far as character and uh, appearance is concerned, um, I'll maybe just nip back to the elevation. So the height of the roof is no greater than, uh, than what's existing, and the eaves height's no greater than what's existing. They're proposing to use materials that are the same finish as what's existing. And also it's it's located at the rear of of, of what's existing. So it's it's not um, immediately visible from the front anyway. So as far as character and appearance are concerned, um, we, we consider it to be acceptable. Um, uh, the next section in the report is about highways. Um, the access is to remain unchanged. The, um, the extension will represent a loss of curtilage around the building. Um, but as I've said, they've submitted information about tracking to show that HGVs can still go and uh, enter and leave the site safely in, in a forward gear. And also um, that the parking complied with the standards contained in the local plan. Um, so the next section of the report is contaminated land and uh, land uh, and land stability. Um, and and as I say, environmental protection and the coal authority have, have requested pre-commencement conditions to investigate um, any issues. Uh, with regards to contaminated land and land stability um, and we're recommending that those conditions be included. Um, the final sections are flooding and neighbour amenity which you know there's, there's not much to say there really is that it's in flood zone one we um, we don't have any concerns with it in regards to flooding and it's not an excessively noisy or smelly type of activity that they're proposing so as far as neighbour amenities is concerned you know including people who might work work nearby um we we, we think that it's it's uh, it's acceptable um so in conclusion we are we're recommending approval subject to a number of conditions that are that are listed in the report thank you Thank you for the uh, presentation and thank you for the detailed report as well. Um, so there are there are a number of conditions on this uh, and this item 13 um, conditions. Um, I think I'll, I'll kick the kick the questions off straight away with um, 
how do, how do we track the conditions and um, can we can we can we ensure that at some point in time we, we check on that the, some of these conditions are, are, are being met? Um, yes, um, we um, they they required to um, comply with the conditions um, in order for their application to be to be their the development to be valid, um, as I think um, Jane was saying. Um, so. Um, it's sort of a self-checking thing, but this is something that we are looking at. I don't know if you want to say anything about that, Glenn. Um, yeah, well, obviously, enforcement is, um, you know, and notably is mostly reliant on people coming forward and telling us, obviously, if they feel that breach has, has occurred. Um, generally, with just developments of this type, um, obviously, this is more commercial, and commercial development or is very much, you know, again, something that they don't want to be seen to be breaching playing regulations, and they are, yeah, mostly in compliant with any stipulations that we lay down in terms of condition. Um, we're obviously aware that um, it's a major development in our town, and we've obviously got the conditions here that we will track as, as we can. Um, obviously, we have an enforcement team. Well, we have an enforcement officer, shall I say, in Alex Sinfield. Um, so she is aware of uh, this application, and um, we have, you know, any concerns that we, we, we have received, she will pick that up and she will talk to the um, agents accordingly. Um, but we have confidence that they will conform to all these um, conditions we've laid out. And obviously, there won't be conditions on the application if you didn't think they're enforcement to begin with. Um, as part of um, MPPF guidance, all conditions have to be enforceable. So we've definitely made sure that's the case here, and um, we will look to ensure that they are complied with going forward. <clears throat> uh, yeah, thanks, Glenn. I think uh, Legal just wants to mention something. Um, thank you, Chair. Just on a point of clarification, in terms of the, the certain conditions which are what are called pre-commencement conditions, some of part of which need to be complied with before the development commences. And I think here that's condition four and five and and those if those conditions are not complied with the bits that need compliant like the submission of schemes and the approval of schemes i think for the contamination and for the ground stability if those pre-commencement conditions are not complied with then the whole development is unauthorized um it's as if you haven't the planning permission hasn't been implemented as far as the courts or enforcement are concerned so that that but that only applies to pre-commencement conditions and because of that obviously it's in the applicant or the owner's interest to ensure that that development is authorized and those conditions have been complied with it doesn't deal with how they track them but i just wanted to explain but that only deals that only relates to what are called pre-commencement conditions thank you Thanks, Jane. Um, yeah, I think the reason why I, I, I do ask is obviously there are a lot of con conditions associated with this one. So it's sort of not not for this particular case, but it certainly did trigger my mind for um, for other cases because I know that the committee um, approve uh, based on the conditions rather than in you, you know rather than ju just because they're there. Um, so I just wanted to double check because things like the condition here. Um, under this, the uh, Sustainable Ur Urban uh, Drainage Scheme, the SUD strategy, um, sites that we're going to have a, an oil interceptor put in. Now, I know from experience that they, they can be quite tricky to install. They're very, very expensive, and also they, they lie basically under the surface of the, of, of, of the road surface and cat, uh, catch all that those pollutants and, and, and any oils that sort of come off a, a road surface. So... Um, those things, they would be hard to sort of have a look at after the bill, so it, it's just got me thinking really. It might be something that we take up um, after, uh, um, sort of beyond this committee and, and have a look at ourselves about how we, how we enforce uh, for such things as that. Okay, um, that's me done with my question. Is anybody else got any questions? Councillor Harper. Hi, thanks, that's a great report. And um, just, a very, just really to confirm something that, um, You've mentioned in the port that you've been in contact with the NC, um, NCB, National Coal Board, about any mine workings that may be in the area. As I'm sure you're aware, this whole area is riddled with mine workings and tunnels and all sorts of things, many of which were dug before the 
National Coal Board came into existence, when there were private pits digging out clay and coal and so forth. And they didn't necessarily chart where they were going to dig. They just burrowed wherever the coal was or wherever the, wherever the thing, the, the clay was. So um, are we satisfied that there's, we're not going to find some horrible tunnels underneath this site that uh, could cause a problem when building work commences? The coal condition is pre-commencement anyway. So if, if they're going to find anything, they're going to find it before they start work. And when they come in to discharge their conditions, we will consult the coal authority. And they are the experts at the end of the day. If they say it's OK, then we have to trust that it's OK. Uh, or if it's not OK, then they'll be the ones that say, you've got to do X, Y and Z before you start your development. So that's, that's really how uh, our position really on it. Yeah, it's just so that, that we're aware of that there is a potential for something to happen there, but uh, hopefully not. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Harper. Any other questions for the uh, officers? No? Okay, so we'll move swiftly on to debate. Councillor Summers. Thank you. Um, no, it uh, sounds good. Um, we've got a pork scratching company now. We've got a date company in Tamworth, so um, who knew? Um, all these firms, you know, quietly going on in the background um, in Tamworth. Uh, doing their thing. It's a success story for them. They're literally growing by 50% and uh, I think it'd be remiss of us to hold them back. So I would just like to put this straight on the table for approval. So propose. Thank you, Councillor Summers. Councillor Goodall, is this a part of the debate or, or a second for the approval? Well, I guess it's part of the debate, but I'm happy to second that uh, that motion, I think it's uh, really to concur with Councillor Summers. It's, uh, I think it's a, a suitable development. We've got similar materials. The, the 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 street scene, in effect, is 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 great. And again, it uh, I think it supports local success from a business point of view. So yeah, happy to second that. Thank you, Councillor Goodall. Is there anything else for the debate? Anybody, anything else anybody else wants to offer up? All quiet on the west of the front. So, uh, okay, so I, I take it we've, we've, we've got a proposal, we've got a seconder for the approval, subject to conditions. Uh, we'll move straight to the vote then. Uh, all in favour? Fantastic, thank you very much. That's unanimous. And that concludes our business for tonight. Officially, we've got um, another item on the agenda to take a look at the scheme delegation. But legal's just going to leave us now, so we're going to have a couple of minutes. So if you want to go grab yourselves a drink, then uh, help us out. Oh, bloody hell. This, uh, it's an information item. Ah, okay, so information item. Yeah, so uh, the officers are going to introduce the information item. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. No, the information item is just a list of appeals we've had in recently. Um, there are, I believe, I can't remember, two notable successes that we've had in terms of the inspector agreeing with our decision, which is obviously very positive. Oh, thank you. Um, so that was, yeah, 72 Dostal Road, the King's Gambit, oh, th no, three, sorry, and um, three Mickleton. Just a point of interest from an officer's point of view, um, three Mickleton was where we recommended approval and members, um, contrary to that, um, refused the application um, down to amenity grounds. The inspector did agree with that point of view he felt that um, amenity was a big consideration here in terms of refusing the proposal and um, residential area so therefore a guest house or Airbnb style accommodation was deemed to be unacceptable. Um, Wigington Road and that's an interesting one in terms of um, debate as well as uh, officers recommended approval and subsequently at the committee meeting members um, decided to refuse the proposal on the conservation grounds. Um, I would point out that the appeal um, inspector placed a lot of weight on the um, comments made by conservation officers and or Heritage England advice that the proposal was acceptable. 
Um, so it really is just to point that out. This obviously, if members are concerned with the <coughs> heritage masses merits of a proposal, ideally maybe some sort of um, con uh, report done by maybe a conservation officer or a heritage consultant may be of use to you know go against a proposal uh, to advice from the you know statutory consultees or a conservation officer, um, because this was quite you know in the inspector's mind when they actually approved the proposal. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd point out these uh, recent appeals. Um, we have got one currently going through the system at the minute. Um, forgive me, I can't remember where it is, but that recommendation or decision hopefully will be due out very soon. And obviously we'll update members when that happens. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Graham. Thank you for that. Thank you for uh, <coughs> sorting the agenda out. Thank you very much. Um, do, we have any, do we have any questions? We, uh, it is only information only, but while we're here, is there anything, anything that we want to... Councillor Harper. Hiya. Um, yeah, on the Wigginton Road um, development, I'm obviously very disappointed that this has gone through. I think it's a very bad thing, and uh, future generations will suffer because of it. But um, we did ask at the original meetings for uh, some sort of a survey to be done on the, uh, on the north side of the chapel to ascertain on whether or not there is a graveyard uh, there and whether we're actually building on the graveyard. Was this, I didn't notice this anywhere in the report, was this actually done? And um, if it wasn't, why not? Thank you. No, I was again, the inspector viewed all the correspondence, all the minutes, etc., that went with the proposal. Obviously, Dent, the, the Del deemed that a such a survey wouldn't be required um, to support the proposal. I'd obviously, during their own investigations in terms of what the considerations would be, um, a graveyard survey wasn't deemed necessary, unfortunately. Councillor Harper, you, did you want to come back on that then? Sorry. Yeah. It wasn't even necessary. Um, we'd, we'd asked for it to be done, if I remember rightly. And so we were overruled by someone who's presumably never been to the site um, and made a decision um, with very little information. Um, I'm astonished. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, Glenn, I'm, I'm just making notes. Um, yeah, because obviously this is for information only, so I've just, I've just thrown it out to a few questions. Y yeah, go on. Yeah. Thank you. Um, obviously, Councillor, I wasn't, I'm not aware of the, I wasn't here when this decision was made. I'm not involved in the process of the appeal. Um, so I can't speak to the lack or otherwise and why the graveyard um, uh, survey wasn't done but just looking at the appeal I had a quick look at the appeal decision before the meeting I've looked at the, uh, the explanation in the, in the um, information item and the inspector clearly relay, um, took a different view on the heritage impacts to members um, so whether I'm not sure if the graveyard survey taking everything on board would have made any difference to that but that, that it was a different view on the heritage impact. He disagreed with members, agreed with the conservation officer and agreed with English Heritage. And as I say, I'm, I'm not sure whether the lack or otherwise of the graveyard survey would have made any difference, but I just wanted to, to point out that was how he made his decision. Just thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. The only thing I, to add to that is I'm disappointed that the conservation officer didn't take a more robust stance on this and back us rather than backing the developer and uh, I think that's regrettable. Thank you. Yeah, thank you Councillor. I think you make a very good point. Um, I think it should be something that rather than scrutinise only too heavily over an information only item that we probably take away and have a discussion internally. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Daniels. Thank you Councillor. Um, very briefly just to say I think yes all information is really valuable because we come with the kind of the local eyes. Obviously, Councillor Harper knows the area particularly well, so bringing in that knowledge of the area plus those expertise that really helps those decisions and an understanding of when a decision is made. So thank you for anything we can get. Thank you, Councillor Daniels. Anybody else for anything else? No. Um, so I think that's it, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, we can close the meeting now. So, um, fan, uh, thank you. And I'd just like to say as well, thank you for the officers. They do put a, a lot of um, due care and diligence and attention to detail in some of our reports uh, and, and the way they present them is really good as well. So you, you really sort of help to bring the, uh, the, 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 the plans to life and help us to understand them. So uh, thank you very much for your hard work over this uh, municipal year in our last planning meeting. So thanks guys, uh, just to hold on, we are having another discussion after this. Okay, thank you very much.